Welcome to this month's edition of Legal Line video series from the American Staffing Association. I'm Stephen Dwyer, General Counsel of ASA, and it's my pleasure to be with you today to address a very important issue facing most, if not every, staffing firm, and that is indemnity clauses in client contracts. Now, when we talk about indemnity clauses, it's an issue of concern because it, they could lead to financial ruin for staffing firms. What do we mean by indemnity clauses? Well, it's a contractual clause that says that the staffing firm will pay damages to clients under various circumstances. And those circumstances will depend on what the clause says. Oftentimes, clients will want staffing firms to indemnify them from the client's own actions. For example, discrimination, clearly an unfair request. So it's important when you negotiate these clauses for you to recognize the risk that you're undertaking by signing broad indemnity clauses. And in that regard, you need to be best friends with your insurance carrier and your broker. Know what your coverage will cover and what it won't cover. And run clauses by them before you sign them. And in that regard, many insurance policies will not cover contractually assumed liability, in other words, indemnity. So you really need to know before you sign an indemnity clause what your coverage says. And going into the negotiation, you should also know that many clients will tell you that your competition has already signed broad indemnity clauses. Well, that may or it may not be the case. The industry position, the ASA position, is that staffing firms should think about pushing back on broad indemnity clauses. And in that regard, we have numerous resources to help you do so. We have a sample client agreement that includes indemnity clauses which we think are fair under what we call the whose business principle. In other words, whose business are we talking about? Staffing firms should be responsible for their own conduct, recruiting, paying employees, temporary and contract employees, etc. But when those workers, those employees, are on the client's site and supervised by them, well, that's the client's business, and they should be responsible. So in addition to the sample client agreement, we have a sample addendum to a client's own agreement. We have a whose business is at risk philosophy document, which explains our approach to indemnity. And finally, we have frequently asked questions, which can address client concerns about indemnity and other clauses in our sample client agreement. I certainly hope you will take advantage of these ASA resources so you can make a more informed, better decision when deciding whether to sign a broad indemnity contract. Thank you for joining me today, and I look forward to seeing you in the future.